Your body, your pet's body, your horse's body is made up of trillions of cells. The cells are tiny, and if they were stretched end to end and stuck together in a string, they would form a continuous line of cells that would circle the Earth about 19 times. That's amazing. All cells have their different functions, skin, heart, brain, etc., but they all operate in fundamentally the same way with the same set of intracellular contents known as organelles. A single cell is able to keep itself functional by owning and operating a variable set of these miniature machines or organelles. So let's focus on a single cell, peer inside, and see what's going on. Well, the answer is a whole lot. I like to think of cells as a mini factory. There's a computer in the middle called the nucleus made up of DNA, and this amazing computer through genes tells the other parts of the cell what they should be doing. So just like a factory, cells make things, and the things they make are essential to life. The things cells make are proteins. Proteins are made up of chains of amino acids, or peptides, which are smaller chains of amino acids. All of these have a specific function within or outside of the cell in another part of the body. The enzymes that cells make are also proteins. Therefore, a cell is essentially a protein factory. So what does a factory need to make things? Well, it requires machines. These machines are the ribosomes in the cell. And the machines need instructions, usually from a computer in the factory, and from DNA in the cell. The factory needs mechanisms to get the information to the machines from the computer. Wires and Wi-Fi in our modern factory. Messenger RNA in our cells. Energy, provided by electricity or furnaces in our factory, is provided by the mitochondria in our cells. We also need a mechanism to get rid of waste or garbage. Factories usually dump it out the door into a dumpster to go to the landfill, or they may recycle some. Our cells do a better job with a nice little bag of tricks full of potent enzymes to destroy waste called the lysosome. The lysosomes also recycle most of the cellular waste, converting whatever cannot be recycled to substances that are excreted naturally. So our cell factory needs a couple of other things to make it work. Power from fuel and raw materials. The factory uses roads and rail lines. The cell, the bloodstream, and the interstitial fluid, which is the fluid between cells, think of that as a loading dock, in order to get the raw materials to where they need to be. What comes into a factory as raw materials depends on what it makes. Our body's raw materials are directed to what is needed for the manufacture of proteins and other organic molecules in the cell. The raw materials for these comes from amino acids and amino acids are found in proteins in our diet, so our raw material is food. Also, in our factory, there are generators to make electricity, or it gets it from the national grid. Either way, something needs to provide the energy to drive the generators that make the electricity. In our world still, this is usually fossil fuel, oil, natural gas, or coal, occasionally nuclear power. Just like a factory's generators burn gasoline mixed with oxygen to generate power, a cell's fuel is a sugar called glucose. The lungs take in oxygen-rich air, extracting the oxygen from it, combining it with hemoglobin in blood cells, and carrying it off in the bloodstream to the cell to fuel energy production in the cell. Within the cell, the mitochondria burn that oxygen with sugar to make the energy the cell needs to function. There. Now we have the cell factory working with its computers, DNA, machines, ribosomes, raw materials, amino acids, and power source, mitochondria, fueled by glucose and oxygen, busily disposing of its waste through its lysosomes. So each of the trillions of cells have this wonderful setup to produce the proteins that keep us functioning using energy produced by the mitochondria. Unfortunately, like most things in life, the setup is not perfect. Things can go wrong, and with time, more goes wrong, as the cells age and get damaged. You will probably recall cells burn glucose, sugar, and oxygen transported to the cells in the red cells in our blood. Bright red blood in arteries rushing oxygen to the cells, 
fluor, oxygen depleted blood draining it away in our veins back to the lungs to be reoxygenated. Unfortunately, burning hydrocarbons with oxygen, whether it be gasoline in our car engines or glucose in our cells, comes with a cost. We all know that huge efforts have gone into cleaning up engine and other exhausts in the past 40 years, because in your car's cylinders when gasoline burns, or the power station when coal or oil burns, there are nasty toxic byproducts that poison the planet. Today's technology cleans them up with catalytic converters and other devices, but not perfectly. Similarly, in the mitochondria in your cells, when glucose and oxygen combine to make energy, there are nasty toxic byproducts called oxygen-free radicals. So these energy-producing sources, so vital to life in so many aspects, come with a potentially lethal dark side. Damaged planet, damaged cells. It's easy to see all that black smoke belching forth from an old factory chimney or an old diesel engine and realizing what a toxic mess that is. Not so easy to see what's going on in the cell. So let's explore that a little. All of the contents of cells, DNA, ribosomes, lysosomes, the cell wall, and even the mitochondria themselves are susceptible to damage in a variety of ways. Let's focus on that damage done to the cell by oxygen-free radicals. Oxygen-free radicals are unpaired oxygen atoms produced as toxic waste that occurs from burning glucose and oxygen for energy in the mitochondria. These oxygen-free radicals zip around the cell like hot sparks, desperately trying to find another unpaired molecule that they can attach to, and in that process damage any or all of the cell's contents and even the cell wall. And so we age. Are there ways to slow the damage and promote the repair? Yes, there are. So how is this done? Let's look at prevention first. Over many, many years, cells have developed protective mechanisms to help prevent some of the damage, and the organism itself helps this process by receiving molecules in its diet that help too. These damage preventers are called antioxidants. Ah, you say, I've heard of those, which most of us have. Now you're about to know what they do and why they are important. Antioxidants come in essentially two forms. Intracellular, which are made by the cells themselves, and extracellular, which we get from our diet. The intracellular ones are complex protein or peptide molecules made from amino acids. There are major ones in animal cells, glutathione, catalase, and superoxide dismutase. Glutathione is actually a much simpler molecule than the other two comprised of only three amino acids. The others are made up of hundreds. It would seem logical that if we ate more of these, we would get increased protection. Unfortunately, not so. The digestive tract breaks them down into their component amino acids, rendering them useless. Fortunately, all is not lost though as there are a significant number of antioxidants in the form of phytonutrient, that's plant-based antioxidants, vitamins and minerals in our diet that can escape the ravages of digestion and escape unscathed into the bloodstream to help protect our cells. Proanthocyanidins from grapes, pine bark, and yes, resveratrol in red wine, as well as the anthocyanins in blueberries, are all examples of the phytonutrient class of antioxidants. Vitamin C and E are good examples of vitamin antioxidants. All of these will protect our cells against the initial onslaught of those damaging free radicals. Unfortunately, most of us do not consume optimal quantities of antioxidants in our diet, and we need the highest quality and complete antioxidant supplement we can find. Even with all the antioxidant protection we can get, mopping up those hot burning sparks of free radicals, some of the enemy get through and cause damage. If this residual damage is not repaired, it will cause to age more quickly as the body suffers the ravages of time with wear and tear to our bones, joints, muscles, and the rest of our tissues. A human, horse's, or pet's body does have the ability to repair some of that damage. We use growth hormone, which we now know is needed throughout life to turn on the cell's repair processes through another signaling protein called IGF-1. These two signaling proteins, growth hormone and IGF-1, attach themselves to receptors on the cell walls and signal or tell the cell to regenerate and repair. Without them, 
all bodies age more quickly. In humans, when we are young and well into our late teens, we have lots of growth hormone and IGF-1, and our bodies can get away with most of the things that teenagers inflict upon themselves. All animals do as well. But as the body gets older, things start to decline, and growth hormone levels gradually get lower and lower. As growth hormone is the trigger for the release of IGF-1, that declines substantially too, and our ability to repair declines with it. The perfect storm. So how do we slow this loss of ability to fix our cells, and hence age as slowly as possible? Fortunately, there are now ways to help this naturally and safely, by giving a boost to our own growth hormone, but staying within the body's normal levels. A specific combination of amino acids, taken as a supplement daily, will help us to do this. So, there you have it. Prevent damage as far as possible. Arrest that gunman in the factory before he gets off too many shots with the right antioxidant supplement. Fix all the damage you can when it has occurred as quickly as possible. In other words, send the repair crew into the factory in sufficient numbers to do the job quickly and efficiently. Growth hormone. If you do this, your horse or your pet and yourself will age as slowly and healthily as possible.